Hi, this is Frank Dukes. This is Mohamed Kisi, alias Bonk Po. Hi, this is David Worth. I was the director of photography on Bloodsport and the director of Kickboxer. This is Haskell Von Anderson III. I was Winston Taylor in the movie Kickboxer. This is Paul Verza, composer of the music from Bloodsport and Kickboxer. This is Stan Bush. I sing Fight to Survive in the movie Bloodsport. You're listening to Justin Ray Harvey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special kickboxer edition of my show. And today on my show, I am proud to bring back one of my all-time heroes. He is famously known as Winston Taylor in the movie Kickboxer, my good friend, Haskell Vaughn Anderson III. Welcome to the show, Haskell. Thank you, Justin. It's a real pleasure again to talk to you uh, and your fans, and uh, let's uh, let's enjoy ourselves. Oh, I, absolutely! Because I I interviewed you last year via video, and it was so great that I had I had to get an audio version as well, and um, you know. I know that there's a lot of kickboxer fans out there and stuff, but I thought that it's more appropriate that we start with, um, you know, what you're doing now and and talk about, you know, that you had brain surgery and stuff. So oh, we'll get yeah. to the kickboxer here in a little bit. Let's let's talk about some of the new stuff that you've done. Well, the, the, the new stuff that uh, we're, we are planning on doing, at least we want to go into pre-production uh, this year, 2014, with the uh, grand hopes of uh, starting uh, film production um, in 2015. I think that's a reasonable amount of time, which will give us uh, the time that we need to uh, raise the finances to do this film. It's called uh, 40 Days Road. Mm-hmm. Which, is an actual, which is an actual road that runs in the Darfur area and uh, the Sudan. And uh-huh. the log line of the film uh, 40 Days Road is a Catholic churchman journeys to war-torn Darfur where he finds his faith by losing his religion. Uh, mm-hmm. This is uh, not a religious film, but it's about a fictitious character with the uh, action taking place in a real-life situation. We're mm-hmm. using the situation as, as the basis of the film. Uh, uh, the main character, which is the character that I will play, is a former medical physician who, um, uh, who after not being very happy with his uh, present life, decides to go into a Jesuit seminary to become a priest. And mm-hmm. this is part of the backstory. And while he's there in the seminary, he becomes very good friends with the uh, African who, who's there at the seminary at the same time. Well, the film opens with my character, now a, a cardinal uh, at the Vatican, who has a very strong desire to see this old friend uh, mm-hmm. who is in hiding in the Dark War region. And uh, while he's in Khartoum, he meets this woman who's also a physician. And mind you, this woman does not know that the character that I'm playing is, is a priest, never mind a cardinal. Uh, but he notices that her character is more or less not in cahoots with the uh, Sudanese government, but uh, has her hand in, uh, in, in the dealings, uh, especially with people in the villages. But she also happens to be a very close friend and an associate of my friend. I don't know that until we arrive at the village where uh, we are later captured by the John Jui. Mm-hmm. And uh, my character suffers all the indignities and cruelties that the people in Sudan suffer. And uh, he uh, learns a lot of things about life, which he didn't allow himself to be exposed to or to participate in in his, in his other life. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it's quite an adventure. Uh, and it, it, the, uh, the, the involvement of the two main characters, the woman and the character that I play, is it, very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you kind of left so to speak, with not with not knowing what's going to happen between the two of them, uh, and leave that kind of open. But mm-hmm. uh, it, it, it's a lot of implications, but it's not definite. So uh, 
and it also sh- shows what's, what's going on in, in that area with, with the so many, with the uh, many people who are trying to survive this. So that's what that one is about. Well, uh, the other the other thing you? I'm working on, uh, I hope to work on, is with uh, uh, Michelle Cuisine, who mm-hmm. played Tong Po in the film Kid Boxer. And uh, he's working, or uh, uh, preparing to work on a project in, in, um, in the, at his home in Morocco. Uh-huh. And he uh, expressed a very strong desire to have me join them in filming. Uh, so uh, we're, I'm just waiting for the screenplay on that and, uh, I, and, and see what's going to happen. So Actually, is it, is, it, is it the pact, Haskell? Yes, so, it is. Yes, it is. I, I, actually, what I can do, you're waiting on the screenplay, right? Yes, I am. Yes, well, I am. what what I can do is after the interview, I have a copy of the screenplay. I can I can email it to you. Well, I'd be very pleased about that because I was going to email him yesterday, and I planned on doing it today. That's part of my notes. Uh-huh. Uh, he and and uh, um, his wife, one of them, I was going to get in touch with because he said I should read the screenplay. He thought I had had it, and uh, I hadn't yet received it. So, well, we take it with you. I'll make sure that you get a copy today of of the pack because well, they sent me thank a copy. You very much. So. Yeah, and, I, and I'll send him a copy. I'll send him an email to let him know that I'm getting it from you. That would oh. be the easiest thing. That, I appreciate that very much, you know, and I'm sure Michelle will too. Oh, oh I, absolutely. Because honestly, I, I was going to mention in this interview anyway that I would love to see you work with Michelle again, anyways. Yes, so. I, I I really would because he's such a uh, very focused and, and direct person, and I understand that the writing of the screenplay is, is very well done. Mm-hmm. And it would, I would love that experience of working with him as a director. Yeah. And that's part of the challenges in this business to be able to avail ourselves to work with people that, uh, that are new, that are also a challenge. Uh-huh. Some things that we don't expect to do. Oh, I, I, absolutely, because, um, you know, um, I. I saw the first time I ever saw you in a film was Kickboxer, and I went, I grew up knowing you as you know Winston Taylor, so uh-huh. it, it would be great to see you and Michelle work together again. Yeah, it would be. It would be. A, it would be a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm looking through that. Uh, really, really, really looking forward to doing that. So it would be a lot of fun. I, and and who knows? It's it's possible that. You know, all three of us could work together because um, Michelle Kesey had mentioned a while back in a private message that he would love to have me in one of his films. So I mean, oh, that would be that would be exciting, extremely exciting. Oh, oh yes, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine anything better working with you and Michelle in a film. So, yes, yes, I think that would be very enjoyable. Oh, I, absolutely. So, um, so, like when you started when you started acting, you started with theater, correct? Yes, I did. I started in a, a small community theater, actually in Cleveland, Ohio, and I did a show called it was the world premiere of uh, a show called No Place to Be Somebody by Charles Cordon, which mm-hmm. uh, won a Pulitzer Prize just before I had done it. It was uh, originally done in New York at the Shakespeare Festival at Public Theater uh, downtown New York when Joseph Pack was the artistic director. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did it in Cleveland, which was the premiere in Cleveland. And then from there, I went to the Cleveland Playhouse, uh, which mm-hmm. is also in Cleveland, a very renowned uh, uh, theater. And um, a lot of the good people came out of there. Um, um, Joel Gray... Uh, people of that ilk. Um, I don't want to shout off any names because I might, I might be mistaken because it was even so long ago for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, I went to uh, back to New York and did uh, off Broadway, off off Broadway stuff, <laughs> and uh, went to the Barter Theater, um, mm-hmm. which is in Abington, Virginia. We actually did that for a season there initially at a place called uh, Norfolk, Virginia, at the Chrysler Museum. Uh-huh. Uh, then, uh, or is their winter home, uh, which is, uh, they tried out for a while, and I, I was very happy with that uh, uh, with that uh, uh, event. I can't remember the name of the show. I should, um, mm-hmm. because it 
it was my first show that I actually got my uh, equity card, Actors Equity Association card. Um, and then when I came back oh, uh, to, to New York to do more theater, I actually ended up getting another play that mm-hmm. I went to Washington, D.C. And then from there is when I got my very first film, which is called uh, Brotherhood of Death. Um, yes, I still yes. need to see that film. I'm I'm yes. searching for it everywhere I can. And I well, actually, I, I I I believe it or not, I actually found it. It's on Netflix. You can actually stream it. It's wow! Well, in that case, I will stream it tonight and watch it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, 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 it was my very first film, my very first starring role, as a matter of fact. And it was uh, I have to explain that it was one of the last uh, the black exploitation films, as they call them at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I shot it with uh, Roy Jefferson, who was a uh, receiver for the Washington Redskins and a few other uh, Washington Redskins players. And mm-hmm. it was about fighting the Ku Klux Klan. And, and you'll see all of that, actually, when you uh, pull up the video on uh, Netflix. Uh, fun film. <laughs> what can you say? And, and, you know, the funny thing about it, I didn't realize it until last year Mm-hmm. that uh, they are actually coming out with a reissue of that uh, film. Uh, the company uh, up in Seattle, Washington, re- re- as they call repressing the film. So mm-hmm. it will come out on a DVD by itself. And I was very fortunate to have them come and interview me so that they can include it on the DVD itself. So. Oh. Uh, I'll have to grab me a copy of that for sure when it comes out. Yeah, that's uh, from what I understand when I spoke to the uh, the, uh, the people who are distributing the film. This is right after our interview that I did with you. Um, they are coming out with that film uh, later on in uh, this year, 2014. The exact date I can't give you because I don't know. They'll probably come out the same time that I did a film, a science fiction film, a small science fiction film called Angel. Mm-hmm. Uh, last I heard, uh, during the latter part of 2013, we're still in post-production. So I would think that would be coming out uh, on DVD, I think, uh, sometime in 2014. So, well, yeah, well, yeah. If anything, if anything new comes out, Haskell, and I don't hear about it, please, you know, shoot me an email and say, you know, this is out about me, and I'll, I'll pick it up, right. you know. I, I certainly will with with, with uh, no problem, no problem at all. Because uh, you know, we being on the, uh, 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 on the on the talent side, we don't necessarily get all the information about when they are doing these things. But uh, we mm-hmm. would definitely be very open and very happy that uh, we have this opportunity that uh, that was presented to us. Oh, I, so I, that, I, that, that's the Brotherhood of Death and Kickboxer, which you can get on Netflix streaming. Wow, that's that's amazing. I actually have I actually have Kickboxer in several locations, my computer, my iPhone, my iPad, so it's 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 everywhere. So well, you know, it's it, it's very interesting now. Uh this year is already starting off there with an interesting uh a knack. I've had uh, several people walk up to me in public uh mm-hmm. and ask me if I was in the film Kickboxer. You know, mm-hmm. so somehow it, uh, people are seeing it again for one reason or another. I mean, the last sighting, I call it sighting, mm-hmm. uh, where, where, where I live, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, paparazzi, as you can call them, uh, people are hanging out. And they kind of like give me the stare when I lift my blanket. She said, let's keep walking. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and yesterday, as a matter of fact, we were in, well, I was in the uh, supermarket. And, uh, mm-hmm. One of, the, one of the gentlemen behind the uh, deli counter mm-hmm. he came out and said, look, guys, look who's here. This is the guy that did kickboxer. And he's never really spoken to me before. He said, hello, good evening, and that's it. But this is uh-huh. the first time, you know, he actually came out with, I know you, and so-and-so. So, yeah, the film was getting out there. Mm-hmm. People were still watching it. And, you know, I've had people walk by and actually stay the line. And uh, I find that very interesting. <laughs> Wow, well, I, I do I did know when, whenever I interviewed uh, David Worth uh, for this uh, kickboxer blood sport project that I've, you know, that I've been pursuing, I actually mentioned that I was trying to find you. Uh-huh. So, and 
as luck would have it, David Worth helped me find you. <laughs> so. Yeah, the interesting thing is I'm I'm easily accessible. I mean, I I don't run around hiding anywhere. Uh, <laughs> actually, I don't even I don't even think about the people contacting me for anything. I I'm just there. If they uh, wanted to contact me, it's it's, it's easy to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as you know, you can find me on the different sites. Uh, IMDb, um, my Facebook. website, which is Pat yeah, Manning. Facebook, Twitter, so. yeah, Twitter, which mm-hmm. is at Thespian. 26. So I'm around. I'm not inaccessible, you know, or Which, difficult to find. I, I was very glad that you was very accessible because, like I've, like I've said, high school, in previous interviews, I've been wanting to um, do this for this vision and, and talk to you for many, many years. So, so, because to me, Lovely. to me, you and Michelle Kesey and David Worth and, you know, JCVD, you guys really, you know, did break the barriers for my childhood because I grew up on these films. So. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. I have um, a number of people who I have uh, been very privileged to meet have s- s- said to me that they have remember watching the film with their parents or with their father and uh, they just you know, that it's a, a film for um, that 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 people remember. You know, it's like mm-hmm. one of the first films that brought uh, martial arts, which I was never a big fan of, uh, out to the public. And uh, like David Worth said, you know, you had uh, pretty people in the film. Actually, you know, everyone was attractive, and which made it easy to look at, so to speak. Oh, oh, and it's easier. Absolutely, and before we. And before we jump into the whole kickboxer thing, because I know that's what my audience is really, really wanting, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I I want you to talk a little bit about um, two things you had mentioned to me before. Um, The first thing would be um, your your brain surgery, and the second thing would be a story that would be too good not to tell about you turning down a dinner with Nicole Kidman. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, the, the the brain tumor thing is, you know, it's it's like an old story now. That that happened. This actual surgery happened at the the famous hospital, Cedar Sinai Hospital in Beverly Hills, mm-hmm. uh, July first, which was a Monday actually, and uh, it, it turned out to be what they call stage one meningioma, which is a very common tumor that can affect the brain, uh, and um, you, they don't know where it comes from. It just it just happens. Uh, unfortunately, I was one of those that that got it uh, in in the in category of the male population. Um, mm-hmm. Most mostly women, they say, uh, uh, get it. And uh, I, I wasn't aware of what was going on over a period of time. But my wife was very astute, and she. Uh, she uh, picked it up and noticed these different things that were going on that weren't going on and uh, insisted uh, a number of times that we uh, go to the doctor. Of course, uh, males uh, trying to be Superman uh, thought nothing was actually wrong or whatever it was that was going to pass in time. Mm-hmm. And uh, finally, I, I, I relented and, and said, okay, um, not relented. I mean, I, I finally gave in and said, okay, let's go to the physician and see what's going on. And uh, he said, yeah, well, let's schedule an MRI, which we did about four days later. And radiologist said, get to the ER right now. You have a mass on the brain. Mm-hmm. Um, we were very, very fortunate. We had uh, one of the world's best neurosurgeons, and um, we did it a week after it was discovered. They said it had a probability of growing for about or close to 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a almost a seven-hour surgical procedure. And a week later, we found out that it was benign, so we had uh, nothing to really worry about. So we were, we were very fortunate. Um, well, well, I'm just glad that y'all were able to catch it in time. Oh, you know. yes, absolutely, absolutely. My wife was uh, very pleased. So we're living a completely different life now, mm-hmm. uh, catching up on stuff that I should have been doing and, and didn't do or wasn't aware that I wasn't doing. 
so yeah, we, we, we're 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 very happy now. Hmm. Well, uh, I I I am truly glad that you are okay, Haskell. So you know. And you too, you too, because uh, you've been going through through your own medical situations, and uh, it kept us all abreast of what was going on. So we're very happy to hear that uh, things are improving at the rate that they are. Oh, I absolutely like you like you like you tell me all the time, Haskell, you're like just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. So That's right. That's right. There's no such word in my vocabulary like give up or stop. It does not exist. Now the thing with Nicole Nicole Kidman. Um uh-huh. I uh, was doing a show that uh in, in, in Sydney, Australia. And the opening night, uh, this young lady appeared with uh, a few of her uh, classmates. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we had the opportunity of, of uh, meeting them. They were just students at that time. We're talking 1986. And um, she was uh, very insistent on um, me coming to dinner or and uh, mm-hmm. I was insistent on the fact, I was countering it with the fact that we were invited the cast uh, to dinner with the producers, and I definitely felt that I could do that. But mm-hmm. uh, she, she, she was very strong about that. Uh, she came the following night and um, wanted to do the same thing. Again, I had other reasons for not attending. Uh, I, 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 I suppose that... Um, you know, it, it was just one of those things. We we, we make our choices, mm-hmm. and uh, it, and and that's what it is. I, I was um, fortunate on uh, several other occasions to to have been able to meet her, but never followed up on it. But I wanted to very much remind her of that uh, situation back in 1986. I don't know whether she would have remembered or not, but I'm sure she would have remembered the play. Mm-hmm. And uh, since there were only, I think, eight of us in the show. And we were in the show the entire time, so uh, it was a very mem- mem- memorable piece. I'm sorry, memorable piece uh, that I, I was part of. Uh, mm-hmm. They just recently did a new production with uh, vets from the Afghan and the Iraqi uh, conflicts with uh, an entirely new cast. So, uh, yeah, and it got very, very, very good reviews. So the show itself is the, the script itself. Is it's an excellent script, and it's mm-hmm. only been done uh, on stage. Uh, but I have not yet heard any mention of doing it elsewhere, uh, in the, on screen or anything else. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. Al- and also, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and jump into Kickboxer because I know people are probably on the edge of their seat. Like, come yeah. on, talk about Kickboxer, you know? But you know. Um, Okay, my my first question is, Haskell, how did you like? How did you get involved with Kickboxer in the first place? And you know, did you audition for any other roles besides, you know, Winston Taylor? No, actually, uh, what happened? I was back east and in, in New uh, New Jersey uh, doing Tracers again, which mm-hmm. uh, I had determined was going to be my last. The uh, time doing that show, we were doing it for Olympia Dukakis, the Academy Award winner for uh, uh, a sh- film that she did, Moonstruck. Mm-hmm. And it was that it was that time that she was nominated. Uh, the time that we were doing the show, and uh, when the show completed its run there and at the George Street Playhouse uh, in New Jersey, uh, mm-hmm. came back here, and uh, my agent had already lined up three different films for me to interview for. And one of them was, the uh, first one I went for was a film called Rain Man with uh, Dustin Hoffman. Classic and, film. Uh, and Tom Cruise. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one was for a film that they were shooting in the Caribbean with a director that I had already worked with. Uh, she directed me in a film called, um, oh, my God, I can't remember the name of it now. I have to look it up. But um, And then the third film was this film that uh, my agent told me was shooting in Bangkok. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went in for the interview of that film and uh, basically was told that it was just a meeting. It was not even an audition. But uh, when I got into the room and met the producers, uh, they, they wanted to hear me read. 
and uh, which I did do. I, I had no problems, you know, doing immediate uh, what they call cold reads, not having an opportunity to read the screenplay or signs, as they call them. Yeah. And uh, just went and and read uh, two or three scenes for them. And there was a gentleman sitting there, and uh, uh, wasn't paying much attention to him. And I just like met everyone in the group. I don't recall them ever introducing him. And when I finished reading, he uh, jumped up and said, "You have a callback." So mm-hmm. I, I thought that he was one of the producers. Uh, and at the callback, which was just a few days later, I read for the same people, including the director and this same gentleman who turned out to be Jean Claude Van Damme. I, I didn't know who he was at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, I think Bloodsport was just coming out and it was extremely successful. So yeah. he, this, I guess the projects were beginning to line up for him. And uh, so beyond those two calls that or two auditions that I actually had, I had, I think, two more uh, with them. And uh, they finally asked for about three weeks off of me to be the role, which I gladly took, and that's when I found out that not only were they going to shoot in um, Bangkok, but they were going to shoot in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was a big thrill for me. Uh, so um, and at that time, uh, the, there was a writer's strike, so the screenplay was not that available, except an old, I guess, the one of the original uh, editions of the screenplay. But mm-hmm. as soon as the screenplay was, strike was over, I got a brand new script, and uh, I was uh, fortunate to be able to uh, read it and study and think about my role uh, that entire summer. And I think that went from June until we left in late or early, the middle part of no, late August, late August it was. And uh, we took off to Hong Kong, and uh, that was that. That was the beginning. Well, no, no, no. The the famous. The famous beard that you have, did you have to grow that for the part? or? It... Yeah, you know, that was at the suggestion of uh, Jean-Claude uh, at, at the audition. Once I got the role, he said, would you be willing to grow a beard because you need to look a little bit older. And I had no problem with that. So I had all summer to mm-hmm. uh, grow my beard to the length that it was. Uh, and then, you know, they, they trimmed it and shaped it and everything else. So that was a lot of fun. But uh, the day that we wrapped filming, uh, mm-hmm. immediately returned to the hotel and shaved. <laughs> so at the rap party on uh, in, in Bangkok, mm-hmm. uh, when I went, uh, literally people didn't know who I was. Yeah, because where you shaved the beard, I guess, they didn't, you know, yeah, they yeah, didn't I, I, place you. Yeah, yeah. So I shaved the beard and they didn't, uh, immediately did not recognize who I was. So I said, oh, this is Cool. Of course, some people said, well, you should have at least kept it for a little while, uh, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I, I just, it was hot and everything else. You know, I just wanted to clean face for a change. But yeah. it's amazing. We, mm-hmm. it, 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 uh, I'm sorry. It's amazing because um, I've worn beards off and on since the filming of that. And we're talking about 23, almost 24 years ago. And uh, it doesn't really make any difference. People recognize you. And... Uh, it's interesting because I haven't had a beard now for two years. Mm-hmm. I get the same response all the time. Where well, are you in the film kickboxing? And this goes from older adults to uh, teenagers who are just now getting to see the film. Wow, that that that's amazing. And uh, that you know, uh, before before I get to my next uh, comment, which is a little which is a little surprise for you, I wanted to say they're also they're also talking about. Here in the near future, making a remake of Kickboxer, but you know, I don't think that it'll be as classic as the uh, classic film is. Uh, you know, more than likely, it won't be. Uh, I have not heard anything, even since the last time that you, were, you interviewed me. Uh, I have not really heard anything except what uh, David Woods said that that using the name, uh, I guess, to attract uh, people back to seeing that particular film, what mm-hmm. it, uh, what, what it, the, the, the subject in, ha, entails, I have no idea. I, I don't know if it's really going to have anything to do with what the real, the original uh, script was about, the original mm-hmm. film. It's, it's, uh, to me, a whole new territory. Um, 
Oh, absolutely. And I actually have a, a little a little surprise for you, Haskell. Um, before we jump back into Kickboxer, um, I'm actually trying to, and I had you in mind when when I actually thought of this because I I read your post about you saying that I, you know, that I had a true vision with me doing this project. Well, I'm actually trying to plan something. Uh, I'm actually trying to plan something special in September. I'm actually trying to plan a kickboxer reunion show on my show to where I'll have you, and then I will have Michelle Kesey, and then I will have David Worth on the show together. Oh, that, that should be real exciting. Uh, that would be fun to be able to talk with everybody or some of the people that were involved with the film. That that would be a tremendous amount of fun, I, I think. You know, I would enjoy doing that. Oh, yeah. I, I, absolutely, and you know, I want to make it a time that I know that you'll be available. But I'm, I haven't released this to, you know, Michelle or David yet. But that that's my idea for September um, well, to do a kickboxer reunion show. I'd be so, I'd be most pleased, most pleased to do that. So, because you know, it's 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 something that needs to be done, and it's something that has never been done. So, right, right, right. Well, so. thank you. Thank you for uh, including me into that venture. I would oh, enjoy that very much. And I hope your fans will, too. Oh, absolutely. I, I honestly think that they would enjoy it, and I know that I would enjoy it as well. And um, I wanted to tell you real quick before we jump into um, uh, Kickboxer some more, I uh, took the liberty of writing uh, John claude Van Damme. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't received anything back yet, but... I did try. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I'm sure you put it out there, you, you will get a response. But, you know, nothing beats an attempt. Nothing beats a try, you know. And I, I always believe in the fact that no matter how many people say no, there is going to be a yes mm-hmm. eventually, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure that when the Jean-Claude uh, hears about these interviews that uh, – I, I took part in, and, and um, Michelle and uh, David Worth. Uh, I, I'm sure he would want to be a part of that, and maybe possibly uh, do the uh, reunion sh- show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that would fun. be amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that would be fun. amazing. That would be amazing because I would love to talk to all you guys at the same time and, and get your thoughts, and and because I'm sure it's been a while since all of you have connected together. Yes, it has been. Yes, it has been. Fortunately, I've been able to uh, connect uh, with uh, Michelle. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, we, we have definitely uh, talked, mostly by uh, email messaging. Um, mm-hmm. But that would be a lot of fun. David, uh, we talk every now and then on the phone. Uh, mm-hmm. or on occasions, we may run into each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that would be fun. That would be a, a lot of fun, especially when uh, Jean-Claude has his name mentioned on the Golden Globes this past week. Uh, did, did he? Because like I was mentioning on the phone earlier, I actually, you know, missed the Golden Globes because I've been so busy trying to, you know, uh, book shows and try to get, mm-hmm. you know, guests and stuff. So I've been kind of, I've been kind of swamped. Yeah, yeah, well, I can understand. I can understand. Makes no difference. But, you know, it's, it, it's good for Van Dam and it's good for people who are associated with him, I think. To have his name out there again, especially on an international network like uh, the Golden Globes, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it, it was it was just uh, a, a great surprise. Wow. Great surprise. Okay, back back to back to Kickboxer. I had to venture there for just a second. Um, mm-hmm. uh, take us through the. Okay, I'm not doing this in any particular order as far as the movie goes, but right. Take us Take us through my favorite scene um, where um, you finally uh, decide to come come rescue Van Damme's brother and hit the Chinese guy with the gun and and you blow stuff up and that was just an awesome scene. So. Oh yeah, yeah, that was actually, uh, if I remember correctly even in the last interview, uh, that was actually my first day 
uh, mm-hmm. shooting, and they had actually been shooting, I think, two or three days prior to that uh, in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the actor, the Asian actor who was uh, going to be coming up behind me, uh, I think he was a little bit taller than I was. Uh, so what they did to uh, get that scene ready was to put me on what they call apple boxes, which gave me a little bit of uh, height. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was like maybe maybe two rehearsals that we did that and uh, did that scene, you know, and then shooting the gun and the explosions and the whole thing. So that mm-hmm. was my yeah, introduction into the filming of Kickboxer. Mm-hmm. Of, of of my participating in the film, that was my first day of shooting. Well, uh, that's, I, yeah, uh, that's one of my favorite scenes because it, it just worked really well together. Because just as soon as you was hitting him, you know, in the face with the gun, you said, "Sorry, it took so long," and it just it blended in well together, you know. And it was just an awesome scene, you know. Yeah, well, you know that that particular scene, like you said, was. The, the favorite scene for a lot of people. I walked into the uh, Peninsula Hotel in Beverly Hills, and I just got as far as the lobby, and the uh, the uh, concierge, the concierge was on the phone, and the first thing he did as I walked in was put his hand up to stop me, and I stopped because I didn't know if I was doing something wrong, or I guess he felt that I didn't belong there. I mm-hmm. didn't move, and uh, he got off the phone, and the first thing he said so uh, I'd have been here sooner, but there's a big fight in town. And I said, oh, my God. <laughs> but uh, he said, yeah, I, I, I had that film. It's on my, uh, it's on my, on my computer. It's on my phone. And in fact, I ran into uh, an individual uh, uh, last week on a Friday morning. Uh, I was having breakfast somewhere, and uh, he was sitting at a table. And I went to get something, and uh, he said to me, were you going to film kickboxing? I said, yeah. He says, I have your scene on my phone. I could not believe it. Wow. Uh, so these people, these fans, I, I don't want to say people, but uh, but they are people. They are people that who, who watch Kickboxer that either grew up with it or they're still looking at it or it's their favorite film. I had a waiter who was serving me in a very well-known restaurant, and mm-hmm. uh, I was meeting a director uh, for lunch, and we were sitting down talking, and as we finished our meal, this waiter came over and, he was cleaning the table off, and mm-hmm. he was beginning to talk. He says, you know, sir, I have to say this to you. I just grew up watching when I thought he was talking to the director. And he looked at me and said, I, my father and I used to watch Boxer all the time. And I said, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, he wanted an autograph. And uh, I said, well, I, I'll tell you what. I, I, I don't want to just give you an autograph. Let me give you a – I happened at, at that time some – uh, some photographs of Jean-Claude and I from the actual film Kickboxer. I said, just mm-hmm. give me your mailing address and I'll just mail it to you with an autograph. And, and that's what I did. And as a matter of fact, that reminds me, I have to send you an autograph picture, which I had. It's not a Kickboxer one. It's just an a, a autograph photo of me. But, oh, that, that'll uh, be awesome because what I, what I will do, Haskell, is I will put it, I will put it in a special place with all my blood sport autograph memorabilia, and I will have it scanned and have it put on uh, Facebook and Twitter and all my websites. Actually, I'll be going to the post office tomorrow, so I'll make sure I put that in an envelope t- today. As a matter of fact, it's two autographs I have to get out, one to you and another person who sent me an email who wanted to uh, have an autograph book, so I have to do that also. You're, I didn't you're, forget. It's just a matter of time. You're, you're just, you're just amazing, Haskell. I mean, that, that, that's all I can really say. You're, you're one of the greatest men that I know. And um, I wanted to tell you too that um, a few weeks ago, uh, I found like I never realized that my mother, um, you know, never watched Kickboxer, and mm-hmm. um, so I made it my mission to. Uh, sit down with her and she watched it with me and I showed her I showed her who you were and um I showed her who Michelle Kesey was you know and and she told me she says Haskell was just awesome in the film and I was like that's I'll make sure that he knows well you know what Uh, please give your mother my love and regards and thank her very very much 
I, I really appreciate that. You know. So I mean, you know, she she's not much for like martial arts films and stuff, but she kn- but she knows, you know, that I love stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's it's just it's just amazing that you know that I can show people these films now and say, you know, I know Haskell and I know Michelle. You right, know? right, exactly, exactly, and be proud of it, you know. It is our pleasure to know and and be friends with someone like you who is doing so much for himself and for the uh, fans and people who are interested in learning about different films like this. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, to be perfectly honest, I was not a, a martial arts fan uh, before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that I am now. Uh, but my my trend is more toward the artistic type of vehicle. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course, if I am h- hired or contracted to do a film and it's a good screenplay and a chance to make cash, <laughs> of course I, I'll do it to the best uh, that, that I can and should as mm-hmm. an artist. And that, that's how I like to look at myself as 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 an artist uh, mm-hmm. because this is an art form. I particularly like independent film. I like the roles that I can get in independent films. Um, and I, I like that uh, the discipline that goes with, in all filmmaking, actually. But uh, mm-hmm. sometimes in independent films, you have to be a little bit more disciplined because you don't have the, uh, some of the, um, how would you say, you don't have as much money. You don't have that much money to play with. Everything mm-hmm. has to be uh, precise and uh, not done cheaply, but done economically. So mm-hmm. well, you really have to know your craft. You really do. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, absolutely. And it's like I've said before, in in, um, in past shows, high school, I stress to everybody, if you have some sort of disability, don't let that stop you. You can do anything you want to. You just got to set your mind to it and oh, absolutely, put in the work. Absolutely. Absolutely, I agree with I agree with that one hundred percent. And and not just for people who have disabilities, anybody in this world mm-hmm. in this life, you have at your ex, 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 you're exposed to so many things that you can do with great success. You don't mm-hmm. have to be held back by anything. You just mm-hmm. go and, and you just do it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you just do. Just go do it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't. I absolutely, because, you know, people have told me, oh, you can't do that or you can't do this, and I've gone out and, I, you know, I've, I've done it, you know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's what you have to do so, and under, all, uh, under any circumstances. Oh, oh I, absolutely, absolutely. And um, if, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, one of the stories that I would like you to retell for my audience is um, um, y'all were shooting a scene in Kickboxer, and uh, uh, Van Dam tells you that uh, they're actually cheering for you, Haskell, the the people in the audience or something, and you stood up or something, and Van Dam said that the people had loved you or something. Uh, uh, we were... Uh... We were we were back. Uh, we were still in Hong Kong at the time, and we were shooting uh, that scene where he's fighting Tong Po, uh, mm-hmm. with the flame and and putting the uh, the hands in the in the glass, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And w- w- they were shooting something that um, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but the, the Jean Claude and I were standing there on on the side just looking, and he turned around to me and he says, you know. The people are going to love you in this film. And of course, I didn't realize what he really was talking about. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I, I'm kind of a, as, as one actor said to me, uh, you are a very intense person. Mm-hmm. You work intensely, which which I do. I well, when I do a role uh, on the set, I, I'm, I'm very much involved, um, I, not lost but it becomes the real world for me, where I am. Uh, mm-hmm. In other words, what I'm saying, I could be in the middle of New York City on a soundstage, and that soundstage is re- supposedly representing another location. Uh, mm-hmm. 
I believe that's where I am. It becomes very real for me. And I, not only on in film do I do that, I do that also in the theater. You know, uh-huh. um, the fourth wall, as they call it, becomes real to me. You know, the camera is not a camera. It's just another thing that's in there. You know, mm-hmm. it's either a prop or it's uh, uh, and, 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 and whatever it is. The camera does not distract me, and I, I like working that way, you know. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's a little bit more difficult in film than it is in theater, because in theater, it's just, you go through the entire show, the straight show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In film, you can cut and restart and cut and restart. So it becomes a little bit more intense when you're there, too. Oh, absolutely, Haskell. And also, a small detail that people may overlook, um Tell us about the German Shepherd Kiki. There's a who? I'm sorry. Uh, the German Shepherd that was in the film Kiki. Oh, the the, the dog. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, actually, I met that the dog um, on one of the one of the shoot days on location. Uh, mm-hmm. Very friendly, very kind, very soft German Shepherd. Very pretty. Um, just just so a, a gracious animal. That's what he was. Did not need the trainer at all as far as uh, the shooting on the film. The, mm-hmm. the, the Tiki and I, uh, Kiki and I, uh, we kind of bonded, so to speak. We uh, were very comfortable with him. Uh, none. He was, he was just, I don't know. It was just one of those things. It just worked like magic. Mm-hmm. Just, just worked. Yeah. Now, even even though I kind of hated the scene, kind of walk me through where, um, kind of walk me through how they uh, worked it to where Kiki was stabbed, trying to you know help Eric's. Right, Eric's right. Life. I believe I believe that was the scene where um, they uh, kind of uh, they they come into where uh, Jean Claude's brother uh, is, mm-hmm. is recuperating, and they uh, ambush. Well, they, they kidnap him. The dog mm-hmm. is there, and uh, I left the dog there, Kiki there. And uh, I guess one of the perpetrators saw the dog coming at him, and he throws this gigantic blade at him or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, I have to. yeah, that really mm-hmm. broke my heart. But in the end, Kiki got even like uh, Justin, can we put this on hold for a minute? Sure, sure. Okay. If I lose you, I'll call you. Call me right back. But give me about two minutes to get this call. Call. Okay. Put it on hold. Put it on hold. Okay. Okay, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with part two with Haskell Vaughn Anderson the third, aka Winston Taylor. <laughs> So, Love the way you say my name. <laughs> so, so, but uh, welcome back, Haskell. Sorry about Thank that. You. We were having some technical uh, problems. So this is part two of the interview. And uh, I believe where we last left off was uh, we were talking about uh, your dog, Kiki, in the film. Oh, we were talking about Kiki. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. I think that's the right name of the dog. Was it was Kiki? I think it was Kiki. Yeah, it was Kiki. Kiki. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so he was a very kind, gracious dog. We, we, we had a lot of fun. There's no question about it. Tremendous amount. You know. mm-hmm. uh, like I said, he did not need a trainer that watched over him through the entire filming process. He, he was there, and uh, he, he was just a, a, a dog, a, a wonderful dog, a very wonderful dog. You know. mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, no. and, yeah. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure being with him. There's no question about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about my uh, one of my favorite scenes. Um, it's uh, when Van Dam is um, trying to get the taxi driver to take take him to the hospital, and then all of a sudden, here you are in, in your big in your big van, and you bump the car, and the, the little guy starts running after his car. That yeah, he was uh, basically in the way and just giving uh, Jean Claude's character a hard time about he doesn't go to the hospital and he had all kinds of uh, 
uh, sundry of excuses for not doing what uh, should have been the easiest thing to do, just to go to the hospital. But I kind of picked it up and knew what was going on. So it was very easy for me to just push him out of the way and said, okay, let me take your business here. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you'll be here all day. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. And uh, I uh, I wanted to talk about I wanted to talk about the beginning scene because I think that scene gets overlooked too. Um, and I wondered the process for it. It's like just as soon as um, Van Damme's brother uh, gets uh, gets crippled in the ring, uh, Michelle Kesey kicks Van Damme, and I mean he perfectly lands right on your lap, and you say, get off of me. Don't you know you give Americans a bad rap? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny, <laughs> funny. I'm, I'm glad you remember these lines because half of them I don't. And I don't even know what I said. I haven't seen the film. Even. God knows. That's probably, probably in, what, 24 years? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that, that, was, that was right. Yeah, I think I had uh, two women on either side of me. And uh, mm-hmm. just just this to uh, enjoy myself, see a good fight, <laughs> watch somebody get crushed, uh, which is what happened, and hear mm-hmm. this guy my ass in, in my lap, disturbing my view, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. In, in Haskell, I got to say, it would have been something if I would have known you guys back then because, you know, like your character... I'm a ladies' man as well, so you know when you when you would have helped Van Dam, I would have been like, okay, when well, it's not going to take care of the ladies, you you go you go you go help Kurt, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was um, <laughs> funny. I'm I'm trying to remember the replay. I I uh, I guess I had a habit of holding on to the actual screenplay for a while and and had my notes that I, I would make. Just look at him and see what I did, but uh, you know, as time passes, you're like, okay, I don't need this anymore. You know, you move on to other things. But you, you're absolutely right. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. interesting scene. Interesting in, the, in, a, in a good way. Uh, I had no. Uh, I, I'm still at that time brand new to film. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, other than doing uh, Brotherhood of Death and. Uh, a few student films at the uh, USC and UCLA and American Film Institute, I still did not have that wisdom that goes into, like, big production things. And we would consider the, the kickboxer being a small film. It was still a big production as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, so I had a lot to learn. And I'm still learning, believe it or not, uh, even with the film that uh, we are going to do. Notice I'm saying we are going to do. I'm not saying we want to do. We are going to do. Um, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm learning different things, you know, uh, that there are different people who take care of things, you mm-hmm. know, production-wise, you know, that we are not uh, allow ourselves to be accessible to because we don't deal with that. You know, that when mm-hmm. you want to produce something, there's, there's things you have to learn, there's things you have to do. Um, oh, I, absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and, and, yeah. And one of my one of my final questions before we move on to um other things is like um one of my one of my biggest and I've I've told you this before but one of my biggest disappointments um was the fact that you did not return for Kickboxer 2. Um, that was my choice, actually, um, mm-hmm. and I, I based it on a, one thing once I heard that they were doing it, and uh, I didn't go chasing after it. I was asked if I wanted to participate, and my first question was, is Jean-Claude going to be in it? And they said no, and I thought at that time, okay, uh, why be in something that the original cast would not be included, and mm-hmm. I think the sense of the story would not be the same. Uh, so I never had the opportunity to read the script or make any decisions based on that. And I also did not want to get caught uh, in, in, in that type of a groove. 
know, to say, okay, I'm going to always end up doing action type films, martial arts films. I didn't want to take the uh, chance on being locked into that, and mm-hmm. that was why I did not do Kickboxer two or three or four or anything else. But well, I have to say, I was asked. Well, well, I I got to be honest, you know, um, the the rest of the the rest of the kickboxers after two, it was all downhill from there, my friend. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, and you know, you know, and and I will say on my show, like, I'm not a big fan of you know, like green eggs. I I think I think what they should do, Haskell, is if if they're gonna if they're gonna like want to redo something instead of redoing it, why not re-release it in theaters with some extra stuff or, you know, get some of the old cast back together instead of remaking a whole, you know, different film? Because it, well, yeah, it I don't know. Work. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen sequels to other films, big mm-hmm. films, uh, medium films. Uh, they, they work and they don't work. Uh, it, it depends. I mean, it's, a lot has to do with, I think, the, the story, first of all. Mm-hmm. You know, if the story's not good, I don't care how many sequels or how much money you put in it, it's not going to work. For mm-hmm. me, anyway. And that, that's, my, that's my feeling. Um, and, again, and again, it's hard to, it's hard to say. We, we don't know. We don't know what's on the minds of these people who do these things. Uh, but then, you know, you establish a following, and, and you want to keep that following up, I, I, I suppose is one way of looking at it. Give mm-hmm. them more of what they had originally. But uh, it, it's a lot of hard work, a tremendous amount of hard work. And if you're just doing it to do it, mm-hmm. just because you have the successful in the first one, and uh, you're thinking you're going to uh, accomplish the same thing in the second one, if the story is not there, it won't make any difference. And your fans will let you know that. Oh, oh I, I absolutely because I told I told my mom the other day, Haskell, and, and this is the truth. I said, I thank God every day that I grew up in the generation that I did with kickboxer and blood sport because it, it, there's there's just nothing else like it. Mhm, mhm, mhm. So yeah, no, I, I, I can yeah. I can agree. Yeah, yeah. So, now, agree. now what I what I would like though is for for you and Michelle to you know. Uh, work on another project together. That I mean, that's different, you know, and that oh, would yeah, be exciting, yeah. you know. So. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure it will be, you know, and uh, I think we would look forward to doing something like that with uh, with, with with eagerness, you know, and and take mm-hmm. pride in, in our work uh, because we, I, I know Michelle is that kind of a person who wants to do nothing but good stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, he, he's very proud of what he does. And he would only want to make whatever he does better than what he did the last time. So, oh, uh, oh absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because I'm going to tell you something funny, Haskell. I'm glad I actually had my seatbelt on because when I first approached Michelle, and, mm-hmm. and he contacted me back, he he said he said I absolutely love your work, and I'm just glad that. I had my seat belt on because I thought I was going to hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you give compliments where compliments are long overdue. Not, I mean, not because they're overdue, but, you know, the people who need that kind of buildup, uh, that kind of push, that kind of support, you know, it's mm-hmm. only right to give them that. And they should mm-hmm. be given freely without any uh, expectation of, uh, uh, of receiving anything back. You know, uh, enjoy oh. the work that people do and reward them for that, even if it's just a mere compliment. And that's important. That's so very important. Yeah. To, to me, compliments like that from you and, and Michelle is worth more than a million dollars to me. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad we were able to uh, be a part of that uh, development and mm-hmm. that, that, that growth, you know. Cause that's, mm-hmm. And we all need it. We all need it. I don't care how successful you think you are or how successful you're getting to be. Uh, you, you, I, I think there's that need for support. And, mm-hmm. and you, you get that by being kind always to other people. 
all the time, all the time. Uh, oh, I, absolutely. And um, I wanted to ask you, Haskell, uh, what what is your expectations for 2014? I mean, uh, they're uh, they're not. Well, I don't want to say that they're not huge, but they are. Um, what I want to do is be in pre-production for our film, 40 Days Road. I want that. I want that very much. Mm-hmm. And I, I will make that happen. That's one of my expectations. Uh, the other thing is that I, I like to have uh, now, at this point in my career, I like to have a real good uh, manager agent who uh, is going to be very supportive and support. Uh, and, and what I want to do and what I want to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I want to be working with very, very, very good people who they can recognize what I want and, and, and where we want to go and be a part of uh, a project that uh, I think that has a, will have a lot to say and mm-hmm. bring a lot of, of attention to um, the, uh, the, the travails of, of people who are who are suffering, who are going through very difficult times, who are not as fortunate as us uh, mm-hmm. in this world, and, and that's what I want my work to do. Uh, I'd like for people to recognize my work and and and, and respect it for what it really is, and that's the work of an artist. Uh, oh, that's what oh, I want to happen. Oh, absolutely, and I. I do hope eventually one day that you come to West Virginia so that I can personally meet you and, and say thank you. I, You know what? I certainly hope that happens, and it will. And, uh, again, it's one of those things where you want anything, you ask for it. Mm-hmm. It will come forth. You know, you just have to ask. You want it bad enough and you believe that you've already had it or have mm-hmm. it, it will happen, mm-hmm. you know. We have to ask uh, mm-hmm. our Lord, you know, the Creator. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, the man who, the being, the supreme being who has given us everything and all the opportunities, that's who we get it from. Yeah. Oh, I, absolutely, because Haskell, to, like when I was born, I wasn't even supposed to have lived, and if if I did, they told my mother, they said, just stick him in an institution and call it a day, and she said, oh, heck no, he's coming home with me, and, you know, it, it could be a lot worse, Haskell, and I've, I've proved them all wrong. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know, believe, believe, that's it, mm-hmm. that's the key, believe and have faith, that's all it takes, believe and have faith, and trust, trust in the Almighty, oh, believe me. I, I, absolutely, because, I mean... You know, that's what binds us all together. Yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. You know, we are people who are created by him to use the talents that we are blessed with to make the world, life, and everything else that we have better for those that are with us and are coming behind us. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. We are servants. That's what we are. Oh, we are well, absolutely, and I... With this project that I've wanted to do for years, Haskell, I believe that this was part of my purpose to, to you know, talk to you guys and and bring you back together. Well, like I said, you want it, ask for it, and just do mm-hmm. it. Just mm-hmm. do it. You know, I mean, uh, what you're doing is it, it takes talent, it takes time, it takes patience, and look what you have accomplished. You talked to all the people so far that you wanted to talk to mm-hmm. and connect with. You're doing that. And uh, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, are still sitting around waiting. You can't wait. You have to go out there and get it. Go get that job. Sit down and take the time. If it's but an hour a day, take the time to work on what you want to do with your life. Mm-hmm. You, know, you may have to do other things to survive until that happens, but that's fine. That's what we do. So do it. Absolutely, because, you know, I... I never thought I would find you, but it happened. I mean, it's just—it's it's amazing. Uh, to give you to give you the short version for my audience, how this happened was like I connected with my martial arts instructor, uh, who is uh, famous for the movie Bloodsport. I had been mm-hmm. a fan of him since I was, you know, three years old, and then 
And then after I found him and um and stuff, I I said, okay, why not push it further? Why not find you know David Worth? So I said, okay, why not push this further? I mm-hmm. found mm-hmm. Michelle, and I said, okay. Third time is another charm, so why not push this even further? And, you know, I contacted you, and here we are today. That's what you do. That's what you do. Don't wait. Get out there and do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's funny because of um, anything you want, you ask for it, of course you get it, but um, it opens up the door for many more opportunities for you. you know, oh, for anybody. I, I, absolutely. You know, um, absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of people have said to you, "Oh, you'll never get those people to respond to you." You know, you're this, you're that. They're too big. But that's you know, that's a lot of baloney. Uh, I'm the, and you're doing it. So that that I think that's all that needs to be said. You are doing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I've had people say that to me, but at the same time, when I've contacted you and like Michelle and, and stuff, I'm mm-hmm. like. You know, I'm not somebody. I'm like, I'm not somebody famous. I'm a small time guy from a small time place. But here is, here is some of my work with people that have been willing to talk with me. You know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. I've presented you know some of my work because I'm very. I try to be very professional when when I'm doing a project that I'm very uh, passionate about. Right, right, and and that's what gets. It will get you ahead much further than where you are even today. Mm-hmm. Keep being professional. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't accept the word no. It doesn't exist in the vocabulary. All you can hear is yes, 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 and I can, I will, and I did. Mm-hmm. And that's all there is. And that applies to everybody, whether you want to be in film, television, theater, uh, j- journalism, uh, whatever. Just this is what I want to do. And I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Everybody and, else, mm-hmm. goodbye. <laughs> and and Haskell, I wanted to get your thoughts on something too. Have you seen Have you seen um, the movie Bloodsport with John Claude Van Damme? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, uh, could you share many, your many, thoughts? Many, many years ago, but I did see it. Yes. Uh, did Did you like the film? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Um, what was interesting to me is that. Um, that's how actually uh, I, I had met uh, Forrest Whitaker uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, some time before that at his house. Uh, he had just come back from the Philippines doing uh, Platoon. They mm-hmm. just finished just finished shooting, and I had just come back from Australia. And he, I met him because a friend of mine was going to his house. Uh, turns out it was Forrest Whitaker's birthday, mm-hmm. and it was like he had this small. Uh, well, a, a, a nice size um, a studio apartment in Beverly Hills, uh, which wasn't far from where I was living at the time. And mm-hmm. uh, that's how we initially met. Uh, he actually came to see, from what I was told, I was doing a show, uh, a stage play called Rounds, uh, that was written by uh, Sean Michael Weiss, who was in Traces with me as an actor. I wrote this play called Rounds, and... Uh, we did it at a, uh, a small theater in, in, in L.A. And mm-hmm. uh, Forrest was, happened to be a friend of one of the cast members that was in the play with me. And uh, he came to see it because I didn't meet him or see him then again at that particular point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm one of these people that I, I like doing my work on, on, on stage. And when the show is over, I, you know, I'll say my hellos, goodbye, thank you very much, and I'm out of there. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of hang around, you know, it's just... Not yeah, cause, into that, you know. Yeah, because you're the but, fastest wheels in Bangkok, so that makes sense. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, it was. Uh, so yeah, and and it was just interesting to see him in that film. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my god. Okay, so what we have now uh, is a small group that's not recognized. When I say not recognized, I mean we actually have no meetings or anything. But every time we run into somebody who had been in the uh, the Van Damme film we call it the uh, Van Damme Club. We mm-hmm. uh, select few that got to work with uh, Jean Claude. You know? mm-hmm. But it's interesting though is that the, out of all the films that uh, Jean Claude has done, it would appear from what I'm hearing 
that kickboxer is the one that has played the most on air. Uh, that would on, that would be true, actually. So uh, I I I'm, I'm, I I don't know for sure, but the impression I'm getting from people who talk about it and which uh, some of my friends would send me uh, clips from the TV guide or whatever mm-hmm. and said, look, the kickboxer was on or was shown or your name was in the program on TV guide or something like that, which has, has happened, but I'm not really aware of it to somebody mm-hmm. who does something to me. So, uh, and why, it, it's very interesting, I don't know why myself that, that film plays so much more than any of his uh, other films. And mm-hmm. I'm talking about... Uh, a, he did a oh I can't even remember the number of films that he's done that were big hits for studios. Uh, mm-hmm. Time Cop was one of them I believe. Um, who I knew people that were in it, uh, uh-huh. but films like that you don't see a lot of, or mm-hmm. you don't hear of them being on cable or on television. Uh, but Kickboxer is one of those that that's there, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's very interesting. I find it very 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 interesting. Hey. Um, Good for me. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hurt mm-hmm. me at all. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, Haskell, just out of my own curiosity, um, did you know uh, the actor James Avery that just passed? I mean, he was. A- I, I I did know James. Uh, actually, I actually one time produced the show that he was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a, a one night thing, and mm-hmm. I was uh, one of the producers on that. Uh, and I, I've seen him at, at different places. We stopped and talked a few times, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, other than other than that, no. Um, I mean, we've done some celebrity things in, in the past. And they just had his memorial, I think, two or three days ago. As a matter of fact, it was a Sunday. Uh, and I say Sunday because I was at a Golden Globes party and did not know that they had a memorial going on at that time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I understand it was very well attended, very well attended, as it should have been. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, someone contacted me by email and told me he had passed away. And I was almost in shock, you know. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Uh, evidently he had medical problems. But, yeah, uh, I I was actually in the process of because um, I, I I wanted to wrap up this you know this project first, but I was actually in the process of of trying to find him because. Mm-hmm. He was one of my favorites as well because he did like a lot of people don't know this, but he was the original voice of the Shredder in the Ninja Turtles cartoon, and um, he also did Fresh Prince of Bel Air and a bunch of other mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that he would have been a great, uh, great interview and a great guy to uh, talk to. Oh, I'm sure it would have been. I'm sure it would have been. I mean, he, from what I gather from being in his presence, and I'm talking about just him and I, a very warm, open, and comfortable person, uh, not at all um, uh, what you might call isolated or distant. Uh, he was a very open and um, just just a, a real nice person, really nice person. Mm-hmm. You know. And, and uh, uh, I wanted to also ask you, Haskell, for this interview, is there anybody in your career that you've wanted to work with but you've not had the pleasure of working with them yet? Um, I, there are uh, many, 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 many people. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I could go down the list, and I'm going from memory at this point. Uh, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Idris Elba, British actor. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there is, um, oh, it's just, just going from memory. It's, it's kind of... Uh, the, the former, uh, the last Batman. Um, oh, how can I forget his name? Who was in the marriage? Christian Hustle. Slater or uh, no, 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 or Christian Bale. 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 I'm Bale. sorry, Bale. I, I would. Uh, that's just three of the people I would love to work with. I, I like what appears to me the preparation that they, they that they go to. You know, just to do that or have that experience with them. To mm-hmm. do a project where they really work. Um, mm-hmm. uh, another character is another character, another actor. It, it's um, um, Matthew McConaughey. You know, I like actors who prepare, who get into their role, so they make it real for them, and that's the way I like to work. Give mm-hmm. me that time to, to get into a role, to really work on it in the sense of becoming that person. Not me being that character, but the character being me. 
you know, mm-hmm. an, an, an interchange, so to speak. That That's the kind of uh, people I want to work with. You know, you get, you get so deep into it that you almost become lost. Another yeah. person yeah. like that is uh, the one who passed away from doing a Batman movie. Um, um, uh, um, I know who you're thinking about, uh, Heath Ledger. Yes, yes, yes. It's another one. You know, but that kind of preparation, that kind of discipline, that 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 that's what I want to do. That's the kind of work I want to be known for. That's the kind of people that I want to work with. Mm-hmm. That, that's that, what I'm those, for. those are great names, but I've got a name for you too that I would love for you to work with. Um, and I'll get I'll get your thoughts. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh yes, 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 yes. That uh, would be spectacular, Haskell. Yeah, that that would be a that would be an that would be a very interesting very interesting concept. Another individual is is, is um, um, uh, I, I even went to workshops with him. Uh, we were in the same workshop uh, back in back in the day in New York. Uh, it was called a Negro Ensemble Ensemble Company. With Lawrence Fishbone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just before he went to do a film called the Apocalypse Now. And I went through that film, uh, Brotherhood of Death. So mm-hmm. here you are, uh, people in the same class. It's just like the people who uh, uh, go to drama school in in in, in England, uh, the Academy uh, Lambda. Um, oh, I forget what it is. They call it Lambda. Uh, and there's another one, British Academy of Performing Arts, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I probably have the name wrong. I can't think of it now because I haven't spoken about it in quite some time. But these are people who do, they, you know, they go to class, they study, they become very disciplined. They don't go anywhere near a television or a film role until the, they have done a number of stage work. That's how these people work. They, become, they get their discipline. That's what they do. Get, they get that down, and then they open themselves up to onto other things. And, and that's the kind of work I need. That's what I want to do. That kind of intense work. Mm-hmm. Running an Academy of Dramatic Arts. That's what it's called. That's one of them. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to ask you about an actor that um, you may not have heard of, but um, he's one of my friends, um, uh, Tony Luke Jr. Have you ever heard of him? What's his name? Uh, Tony Luke Jr. No, I don't think so. I will. What I what I will do, Haskell, is I will send you um, one of like a movie trailer that he was in, and and um, maybe later on get your thoughts after you have, you know, seen seen the film. It's it's a great film. So okay, okay, I'd be very interested. I, I look at all work. And I don't mm-hmm. uh, disparage anybody from their work. I look at it all. You know, see what I see. See what I can learn. See what I can take away from their performances. See what they do that I can use. It's called skill. That's what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever makes them really look good on screen and it works well, I will try to find some way to use it in what I do, in my work. I absolutely, has going. And uh, you know, we can wrap this up anytime you would like. But one of the things I want to ask you is because I would really appreciate your advice and input like um eventually what i would like to do is take my dream even further is like getting to like maybe acting or something what type of what type of steps do you think i need to take um to to achieve uh to achieve that dream do you think well you know it's it's you know, it's very tricky. People who, who I shouldn't say people, but those who want to uh, do what I do or anybody else that they see do in, in this business, and mm-hmm. you know, they, we talk about people talk about schools and the things that are available for people to participate in uh, to, to learn the crafts, as they put it. Um, I, 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 you know what? One of the best things to do is just do it. That's one thing. If, if you have a, a theater community available, mm-hmm. you know, get involved. Just go do it. You know, you, you learn so much by just going out there and doing it. Mm-hmm. And classes, is, 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 you know, they teach it in universities and colleges, and there's acting schools that people participate in and spend uh, a tremendous amount of money on. 
Uh, I'm not saying that it's wrong, but there's so many different ways that you can learn these things without having to um, spend a tremendous amount of money. And that's what people do, you know. But there's nothing like going out there and just watching the work, watching film, watching Mm -hmm. how people work, and just just, just learn it, just do it. Well, one one thing that I do have on my side, Haskell, besides having a good heart, is I'm not afraid to be on a camera at all, at mm-hmm, all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's one good thing that I do have on my side. Good, so. good. That's even better. That's even so. better. But as long as you're comfortable uh, and you can be a bad character that 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 you that you're looking at, just do it. You know, mm-hmm. don't, mm-hmm. don't don't be held up by anything. You know, that, oh. that's my advice. Oh, I absolutely have. So, and um, you know, and my my final thoughts to you is um, thank you for doing this interview. And also, whenever you have new and upcoming projects, I hope that you will, you know, allow me the honor and pleasure of recording you again, so that I can, you know, stick this on my show because it's. Uh, I've recently moved my shows to uh, to YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Well, you know what? This is what I would do. I, I have a project that I've already done. I've done it a, few, a number of years ago, a mm-hmm. uh, project that's actually looking for a distributor. Uh, but it's completely done. It's, it's a family-type film. I actually have it. Uh, I actually have it on my laptop. I mm-hmm. can just basically send it to you and, and let you uh, enjoy it at your own time. And uh, it's it's called Boy and Dog, mm-hmm. uh, independent project, and I mean really independent project. And um, you know, it, it's a nice story. I'm not going to say anything more about it. I I, I like people to uh, uh, use their own devices and, and and come up with what they feel or how it what affected them. And and that, and that's what I'll do. I'll send it to you. But in, in respect and, and in regards to your last question about doing projects and getting them on your show. Yeah, I can assure you, you will be one of the first, mm-hmm. if not the only one, that I will definitely talk to about a project that's just been done or we're getting ready to start. And uh, we definitely have pretty to that. No Cause, question about it. Because to me, Haskell, to be able to document this stuff and to actually talk with you live, to me, that's that's worth that's worse than anything in the world because I, you know, things like this, things like this will be still be online even after my time is done. Mhm. So, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you're right. You know. well, you're right. Absolutely correct. Yeah. I, I mean, who knows what this might lead to? You never know. Mhm. You know. For I, everyone I, absolutely. involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so. so. Yes. Yes. Go with it. Well, I I think that's about it. Um, uh, I got some projects that I have to work on, and I need to get busy. Uh, but I really enjoyed this. I, I hope your fans did. I hope they do. And uh, you know, mm-hmm. people like I said, if they need to get in touch with me or find out more things about me, they can always go to IMDb and uh, mm-hmm. look me up. Uh, like I said, I have a website, Haskell Anderson. Anderson.com. That's what it is, HaskellAnderson.com. And uh, I'm, I'm very open, very open. And, and if all else fails, that they need help contacting you, that's why all they have to do is, um, is contact me, and I will help them contact you. So. There will be no problem whatsoever. It will be my pleasure. Mine so, completely. So uh, thank you for doing this interview, Haskell. And um, I... I'm going to um, I'm going to get off the phone now so that I can send you um, the screenplay to the pack. So yes, yes, please do, and I will contact Michelle and mm-hmm. his wife Melissa and let her know that I have it, and then we'll be reading it. Okay, because I I will be anxious to hear to hear your thoughts about the pack and, yes. and what you think. So I will go ahead yeah, and let I- you go, my friend, and thank you for being on the show. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank your mother for me. And I, I want to say thank you to your fans uh, for, believe it or not, still hanging in there with me and, and, and supporting uh, my work and, and the film Kickboxer. I'm glad it's out there and people can still enjoy it. Have a great day. 
and be blessed. I absolutely. And on my show, High School, and my final my final thought is High School. You will always you will always have a home here on on my radio show. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, and I will be talking to you again soon, my brother. Much love. Thank you, my brother. Bye bye. Bye bye.